and we're going to learn a little bit more about two charities that will be benefiting from the sale of his work uh, during this exhibition. The first one is the Perry J. Cohen Foundation, and the second is Little Kids Rock. First we'll see an introduction to the Perry J. Cohen Foundation, hear from Nick a little bit about this foundation, and the same thing with Little Kids Rock, and then Jason will wrap it up and take some questions. being here. I, before I get started, I just want to really thank Rena and her entire team at the Cultural Council for giving us the opportunity to present Jason's work in a wonderful, wonderful, uh, culturally rich community. Um, and I think the most important thing I can say about the Cultural Council, it is, it is community. And everything that um, Jason has done uh, alongside the Perry J. Cohn Foundation, uh, we can't thank him enough as a family as our neighbor uh, and, as a, and as a dear friend. Um, we, we've had quite the bromance in a very, <laughs> very, very short period of time and Jason is, has taken Palm Beach County on the road uh, from his studio to New York City to help this community uh, and sell his works of art uh, at some of our international art fairs uh, which are sponsoring this exhibition, whether it's uh, Art Miami, which will be next week, or the Palm Beach Modern and Contemporary Fair in January. Uh, he was with us in New York in May, and what you saw in the video um, is the Perry J. Cohen's Wetlands Laboratory, uh, which we've had tremendous support of uh, at the Jupiter Community High School. And that's phase one. It's an outdoor classroom that's being built um, to, to support the JERFSA program, which is the Jupiter Environmental Research uh, Field Study Academy which Perry was accepted into. Um, so I'm here today uh, to, to be a part of what Jason's been doing his entire life. And what you're seeing is a retrospective, basically, of one of the most talented people I've met. And I've been in the art business for a very long time now. And there is no shortage of energy, effort, collaboration uh, when it comes to Jason and his work. Uh, he's someone who's extremely committed every day he is creating something, whether it's lyrics, paintings, uh, music. Um, I bet you if you asked him to, cut, to cook you a, a wonderful meal, he can make that happen within, within a, a lickety split time. He's extremely talented. And I, I think the video also gives a, a great understanding of, of the power uh, that comes behind with Jason. Uh, you know, I'm here today on, on behalf of the Perry J. Cohen Foundation, which was founded um, everybody knows the story of, of Perry and his dear friend who were lost at sea. What we try to do is, is, is continue on and, and um, create a positive message and a legacy for our son um, by the things that he was most passionate about. And that being the arts, uh, he was very, very much in love with the arts. Um, the outdoors, he was a kid that loved to be outside. He uh, 
didn't lay on the couch. He was always doing something. In fact, uh, one of the things I love about hanging out with Jason is that level of energy that Perry had. Uh, uh, Jason uh, and Perry would have been the best of friends and I would have been left in the dust because <laughs> I can't keep up. I couldn't keep up with Perry. I can't keep up with Jason. Uh, they, they're two peas in a pod, so to speak, in the energy and the spirit that they have. Um, so the marine sciences, the environment, um, the wildlife, very, very important to this foundation. Um, we also have teenage entrepreneurship. Uh, it's really critical, I think, when we think about the future of how generations will change and, and younger kids will, will make a difference in this world. And it's important to empower them. The art provides access. It lets their minds imagine um, being caring and a great caretaker of an environment, of our community, being a great neighbor, and then coming up with creative ideas um, to, to, to move those issues uh, along is really important. And so to, to, to be a young teenage entrepreneur is, is extremely important, to encourage the, the kids, uh, the future, to, to create a, create their own little businesses, understand that they can make a difference uh, in the things that they care about. Uh, and to start that at the youngest age is extremely important for us as a foundation. And then boating safety education, uh, that is an obvious one for us as a family and as a community being a seaside town. We're very much committed to that. Uh, we want to make sure that no one ever forgets uh, what happened to, to Perry and his dear friend that day. And that we all learn from it, uh, whether you're young, or old, uh, the, the, the purpose is, is, is to, to always uh, use your best practices uh, when, you, when you're going out into the ocean. And so we're providing that education that's much needed in the community. Extremely excited today because uh, when I met Jason, and I'm, I'm going to cut it short, I know I'm running a little bit long, uh, it was a true friendship. It, it, it started out very basic, uh, caring for each other, what he was into, what we were into as a neighbor and someone who lives in the Jupiter community, he, 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 he wanted to help. And, you know, I said to him, well, tell me what you've been involved in, you know, because this is all new to us starting, I've, I've worked with a lot of charity, but what do you, you know, tell me what you're passionate about. He said, man, I, I love kids, I love music, you know, and I was, I'm involved with little kids rock. I was like, well, you know, tell me about that. So he started to tell me about it. and. Uh, you know, we then, we then came up with the idea to, to, to come and speak with Rena and her team about this exhibition and collectively the work um, that Jason, the proceeds will go to fund the first chapter of Little Kids Rock here in Palm Beach County. And I won't tell you about it, but Matthew will. It's a great, impressive national program. So thank you for everything, Jason. <laughs> Music is one of life's great ephemeral treasures. You can't touch it, but it can touch you. Music is my life. Why are music programs important? Music puts children in touch with their creative sides. And that is the asset that we are most going to rely upon. The future of our world lies in our children's creativity. It's our modern band programs, which meet kids where they are, teaching them music that they know and love, leveraging that passion, and getting them ready for tomorrow. Music makes me feel like I can express myself without being destructive. When you put a child in touch with the power of music, with the power of creativity, you're doing a service not just to that child, but to that child's family, to that child's community. When I come to music, I have joy. If we want our children to live in a world of beauty, we have to invest in beauty. If we want our children to live in a world that is harmonious, we have to invest in harmony. Without music, the world would be nothing. Music is not an ancillary nice to have. Music is a core component of what it means to be fully human.
I'm Matt with Little Kids Rock. Um, thank you so much for having us to the Cultural Council. And uh, what, an, what a wonderful, awesome phone call to get from Nick uh, to say that he is working so closely with Jason and for Jason keeping us in mind all these years. I think uh, Jason has been a friend and supporter of Little Kids Rock since about 2003 when I think he uh, first joined us for a classroom site visit in San Francisco with uh, Bonnie Raitt, I think, and some other folks. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. so, uh, so it's just awesome that uh, Jason has uh, kept us in mind all these years and to, to get such a wonderful phone call from Nick um, saying, hey, we, um, you know, we're going to display uh, Jason's art and uh, that we'd like to have Little Kids Rock be one of the uh, charity beneficiaries of the proceeds of the sale too. Uh, launch the first, uh, you know, to launch a, a chapter here in uh, in Palm Beach County. So that's really exciting. Um, we are uh, currently serving like 43,000 kids right here in Florida across uh, between uh, Tampa and Miami. And so uh, Palm Beach County here will be our third uh, Florida chapter. And uh, then uh, this year, right now, um, across the country, we're serving about 320,000 kids in more than uh, 2,000 classrooms, in 200 school districts, in 37 states. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we've been doing it since uh, 2002. So in that time we have just um, been growing exponentially. And uh, I think that's because our program uh, connects and works with teachers and kids. And what we do is um, provide a culturally responsive, uh, inclusive, and kind of student-centered uh, music education program that we call Modern Band. And Modern Band is uh, basically um, public school, uh, popular music in public schools. And so it is kind of leveraging the cultural capital of our teachers and students to um, uh, perform today's music with today's instruments. So guitars, keyboards, bass, and drums, and everything from, uh, you know, Beatles to Bruno Mars to Metallica. Uh, and everything in between, and what's really um, important and neat about that is that it really comes from the kids uh, first. So the kids are uh, bringing the musics that they're hearing and listening to into the classroom, learning it alongside with the teacher. Um, and because we kind of emphasize uh, composition and soloing and imp improvisation, we really first want to uh, get kids turned on to uh, the creativity and using music for creative self-expression, um, which uh, goes a long way for a lot uh, of the kids in a lot of uh, underserved school districts uh, and uh, young people in very difficult uh, circumstances that we that we're able to uh, provide a uh, healthy creative outlet for. Um, so that's a little bit about what Little Kids Rock does. I'm super excited to be launching in Palm Beach County and to uh, to be having Jason and Nick uh, support us and, and the Cultural Council support us in this venture. So thanks. Uh, <laughs> it's come such a long way, but it hasn't been <laughs> yeah. Long. yeah, absolutely. So when we first heard about it, I'm going to talk about that because it's kind of fresh in my head right yeah, now. But, um, when I first heard about it, uh, I was brought to the band and we all did our own uh, collective thing for the Boca Rock. And there was only acoustic guitars then. I think the, that oldest uh, elementary school in California was where we met. We did that show in 2003. We did another uh -huh. thing at the, the uh, record plant in Sausalito. We had a bunch of kids come out. Uh -huh. yeah, so yeah. back in, I don't know if it still happens, but back in the day, in the early day, so we had this cat that would build these acoustic guitars, $33 or $37 or something we could get them for. So if somebody gave us a grand, we could fill up a couple classrooms for start at third grade and go to sixth grade. And as David Wish that started all this, um, great name for this, or David Wish is a good name. <laughs> he saw the music, he was a teacher, so he saw the music programs being moved, removed from the schools. And so how do we put it back in? There was the students were asking him, will you teach me guitar? And he had to get some of his friends to teach the, you know, the demand for the kids wanting to learn. So he said, let's make this happen. So we get these $30 guitars, and everyone is the same. No one has the shiny Stratocaster or whatever. It's like everybody's is the same. It's up to you to build a relationship with that instrument that nobody can take away from you. You can be on the team when everybody plays together and you learn the songs collectively with your, with your uh, class, but you're also encouraged to make your own songs with the chords that you learn in your class. 
And back in, the, in that year, 03 or 04, there was a thing where we tried to get them to build uh, their own songs, and whoever came up with the best songs, we would get together. We got together at the record plant in Sausalito. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of heavy players. I mean, there's some great players, Roy Rogers and Zigaboo from the Meters, and myself, and uh, I mean, great Bay Area players. And we take these kids' songs, and we would record them. So they were with their families in the control room, looking through the glass. We're up in the big room with the phones on, knocking these songs down. And they're about, you know, baseball and my girlfriend and Yoda. The one I remember is about Yoda. Right? And we were just hitting it was and it was wicked. I mean, because I, I played bass like I want to play bass and they we were put, taking it seriously. But to see that kid's face when his son went, my, my Yoda dan, dan, thing transformed into this wah you know, the song and his mom and dad behind him going. <laughs> that that was that's what really got me off on the right foot with this whole thing and why I always want to stay involved. So that thing about the feeling that you get from learning a song, starting together, stopping together, and yeah, we did it. That feeling, there's only maybe two others at all that are as good. <laughs> and I want people to feel that. I chase it every day. I feel it every day. At some point, I got one song this morning and a six tonight, whatever, I'm going to feel it a bunch today. I want everybody to have a chance to feel that that is interested in feeling it. So that's, and I think they were collective with other people to help look at rock, and it's become a thing where, I mean, Jennifer Lopez, who was it, Bonnie Raitt, a few weeks ago, earned a million bucks or something at some benefit for the kids. I mean, this is, it's grown to this giant thing, it used to be just acoustics in third grade class, and now there's keyboards and bass and full bands in front of a bunch of thousands of people, and holy crap, you know, it really grew into this wonderful thing, just like it was supposed to blossom into this beautiful thing. So it's important that we put that up. I love the quote about investing in beauty visual, whatever like that, and it ties right into Nick's thing. If you give kids a chance to begin, I know that, like I was raised on a farm, right, and I, I raised animals and I learned how to clean animals and all that, and I sold eggs to the ladies at the church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I take about six years old, man, I've got my few dozens, and I sell them to them, and I keep my own books, you know, and then mowing yards, and I had big animals, horses, and stuff like that, so I do horse shows and earn the money there and pay for the feed. It was all, at 10 years old, had my own ledger. My dad was an accountant. Um, and so that, that kind of thing is in me. So when I heard about this, and, and these kids are taking a chance, and Nick wanting to push that kind of thing with kids, when there's so much of this stuff, playing football like this and skateboarding with your thumbs, you know, that, that's not, I'm not with it. So getting outside, getting on an instrument, getting on the water, you know, learning about animals, loving animals, caring for animals, and what that builds in you. All those things that you need to take chance, chances on when you're little and get away from the screen as much as you can, I want to support that. And any kind of music that kids can make, you know, yeah, it needs to be in tune, but it can't be wrong. You know, no matter what they play, it's awesome. And I tell you, when we did the thing with Tom Waits, Bonnie Raitt, and all that was in the, the oldest elementary school in California, that was established 1840 something, 1864 maybe it was. And, uh, you know, every color of kid. Maybe a couple kids like me, but I'm every shade of child. And it was just awesome. And they played for us first. So third grade class came in, and they know the, the chords that are sub right there, just those ones that are nice and easy. And they play their song, and these 30 little voices with 30 little guitars raise up, and we all look at each other, and we just, oh, I mean, there's no way. It's undeniable, right? You're like, oh my God, yes, this is it, this is it. Then the fourth graders come in, and they got a couple more chords together, right? And so that is that. Then fifth grade, then the sixth graders come in, and they know the ouch chords. They call them the ouch chords because down here, when you got to get heavy, that hurts to play those a lot more. <laughs> so the sixth graders can play the ouch chords, and they were playing these heavy songs, the heavy lyrics, very in tune with history, not like crazy washed history, but real, real history of what really happened. The, sings, the songs they sang back at us. We were all amazed. And then we got to play for them. You know, so we applauded each other. They said, all of them wanted to ask, when did you start playing? We all said we were about nine years old. And we were talking to nine-year-olds, and they're going, really? <laughs> you know, like that kind of thing. So it, it can come full circle, and we keep on going in the circle, so the circle continues. You know, the young kids become me, and I give it back. And so on like that. So that's that's why I'm doing this with these two things. The way that like, Perry would have been down with Little Kids Rock, mm -hmm. right? He bright little kid that was a go-getter, and that's me. 
And so that's why we relate, and that's why I want to do something with, with Perry's Foundation. That's why I always will be doing something with, with his rock. So there you go. Thanks, guys. Awesome. And thank you for coming. Are there any questions? We can do questions and answers now. We can go into the gallery if you what? want to do any one-on-one. -on -one. In the gallery, for the, for the media, if that's okay with yeah, you? Yeah, better. Yeah, you? better. Okay. Yeah, better. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, we can go out just, and play. Just, just walk around.